Professor Shubato Bose from Harvard University, the chief guest at the West Bengal Pollution Control Board's 50th year celebration event, addressed students and dignitaries with a powerful call to action on climate change and environmental preservation. His discourse resonated with the audience, emphasizing the imperative of collaborative efforts between India and Bangladesh to tackle environmental challenges. Subhato Bose's insights underscored the significance of the occasion, urging stakeholders to adopt proactive measures in safeguarding the region's ecological heritage. Referencing historical and contemporary environmental contexts, Subhato Bose highlighted the interconnectedness of rivers, livelihoods, and sustainability. He emphasized the need for innovative solutions and cross-border cooperation to address the complex challenges facing the Gangetic Delta and the Bay of Bengal. Attendees left the event inspired by Subhato Bose's impassioned fear for collective action in preserving the environment for future generations. The celebration served as a platform for dialogue and reflection on 50 years of environmental stewardship in West Bengal. Subhato Bose's contribution added depth and urgency to ongoing discussions, igniting a renewed sense of commitment towards sustainable development and ecological resilience in the region. Fifty years ago, pollution control may have seemed adequate as a goal. We must now redefine our aspiration to work for climate justice. And I was very glad to hear from Srimati Roshni Sen that the main purpose of the ministry that she heads is in fact to combat global warming and climate change. We need a social movement of the young to force governments at the union level and in the states to address the pressing imperative of protecting our environment from further degradation. In discussing the geographic structures of Bengal, rivers come first. The turbulent hydrography of the great rivers has had a close bearing on our region's ecology and economy. Over the centuries, the main river has repeatedly changed course, altering the balance of the river system as a whole. The periodic breakouts were brought on by a gradually leveling of the land and the silting up of the old river beds. The Bhagirathi, flowing through the heart of Western Bengal or Ra, had risen to preeminence during the Mughal era upon the dwindling fortunes of the Bhairav and Saraswati. Its decline paralleled that of the Mughals and its fate was sealed once its distributary, the Damodar, awkwardly lurched southward in 1770. Since the early 17th century, the Ganga had pressed for outlets further east and found them in the Gorai in Haridpur and more importantly, the Podda, which wove a wide swath through much of East Bengal, including Dhaka, Faridpur, and Bakharganj. The general eastward swing of the river system was in part accentuated by catalytic events in the later 18th century, as environmental upheavals paralleled and or matched political ones. James Renan, a late 18th century imperial cartographer, found the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, or the Ganges and Puranputar, as he called them, intersecting the country of Bengal in such a way as to form the most complete and easy inland navigation that can be conceived. In most parts of the country, a navigable stream could be found within a maximum range of 25 miles. This river navigation gave constant employment to 30,000 boatmen ferrying the salt and food for 10 million people and transporting commercial exports and imports amounting to perhaps 2 million pounds sterling every year 
in the immediate aftermath of the British conquest of Bengal in Plassey. The boats could be as large as 180 tons, but more commonly had a capacity of 30 to 50 tons. Renel regarded the Ganga and the Brahmaputra as twin sisters from the contiguity of their springs in the Himalayas, one moving west and the other east. They resembled each other, not just in length and volume, but also the smoothness and colors of their waters. The Ganga traversed mountainous paths for 750 miles to Haritha, where, gushing through an opening in the mountains, it flowed with a smooth, navigable stream through delightful plains to the sea, some 1,350 miles away. From a military perspective, Renault thought it infinitely surpassed the celebrated inland navigation of North America. In its journey through the plains, it received 11 rivers, some of which were equal to the Rhine and none smaller than the Thames. The delta bordering on the sea was a labyrinth of rivers and creeks, the Shundurbul. It was enveloped in woods and infested with tigers. The river and the sea, Nodi Ebong Shamutra, were bound in an intimate relationship. The water of the Ganga, taken at its height, contained a quarter portion of mud. No wonder then, Renel commented, that the subsiding waters should quickly form a stratum of earth, or that the delta should encroach upon the sea. The ocean, in its turn, exercised its dominion in the winter and the monsoon in two very different ways. In the one, by the ebbing and flowing of tides, and in the other, by depressing the periodic flood, till the surface of it coincides as nearly with its own as the descent of the channel of the river will admit. The Ganga was well known to European travelers for centuries. However, the Brahmaputra was unknown in Europe as late as 1765, the year the East India Company obtained the Diwani, or the right to collect the revenue of Bengal. The twin sisters, separated at birth in westerly and easterly directions, startlingly subverted the saying that the twain shall never meet. Some 200 miles from Yunnan in southern China, the Brahmaputra hesitated. Here it appears, Renel wrote in 1780, as if undetermined whether to attempt a passage to the sea by the Gulf of Siam or by that of Bengal, but seemingly determining on the latter, it turns suddenly to the west through Assam and enters Bengal on the northeast. Throughout the course of 400 miles through Bengal, the Brahmaputra bore an intimate resemblance to the Ganga, except in one particular. The exception was this. For the last 60 miles before it met the Ganga, it forms a stream which is regularly from four to five miles wide, and but for the freshness might pass for an arm of the sea. It was this watery landscape that was home to the peasantry of Bengal. Contrary to the claims of Fernand Brodel and the Anal School of Historians, geographic structures are not constants. The transience of the physical environment is nowhere more evident than in the deltas of great rivers. Next to earthquakes, Renel correctly noted, perhaps the floods of the tropical rivers produced the, the quickest alterations in the face of our globe. What Renel's 1780 snapshot could not capture was the steady swing of the active delta towards the east over three centuries. Nor could Renel anticipate 
catalytic events that would change the identity of rivers. The great flood of 1787 resulted in the Tista, formerly a tributary of the Ganga, to link up with the Brahmaputra, which shifted westward to meet the Ganga near Gualondo in Dhaka via the Jamuna. The waters of the twin sisters merged to flow into the Meghna near Chandpur in Kumilla. East Bengal's agrarian identity would henceforth be inextricably linked to the strains of the boatman's music, the Bhatiali, that wafted across the Podda and Meghna. In my books, Agrarian Bengal and Peasant Labour and Colonial Capital, I have shown how and why the environmental and demographic history from the later 19th century to the 1920s was shaped by colonial interventions by the British. The river system had begun to swing towards the east from the 17th century. The shift gathered momentum in the 19th century as a result of human interference in drainage facilities. The silting up of the rivers coupled with high mortality due to malaria epidemics brought about a demographic arrest from the mid-19th century to the 1920s with a corresponding reduction in the extent of cultivation in West Bengal, though not in the East. The construction of road and railway embankments played havoc with the drainage system of our region. The stagnant waters provided breeding areas for the mosquito and throughout the later 19th century, a series of malaria epidemics swept across Bodhaman, Birbhum, Hooghly, Howrah, 24 Parganas, Nodia and Jashor. By Staff Reporter, Kolkata, NM News. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel and also click the bell icon to get the latest updates.